everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Kerbal. Today's plan was going to be to uh, try and send a rocket up to the moon, so uh, let's have a look at that, shall we? Um, let's see if there are any useful missions to do first as well. So we've got one active, service tourists, orbit tourists, flag on Minmus, plant a specific satellite in a specific place, yes. Sounds difficult. Flag on the moon, I'm about to go to the moon, so let's do that. Probably going to use this rocket to go there. We'll save the Minmus ones for next time I go back there. Okay, let's look at this. So, I need a command pod. Now I've got the big ones. I don't need to. Um, I don't need to bring two along this time. So that's going to make things a bit easier. It's a significantly bigger diameter. Uh, so that's going to make it um, mean I'm going to be using bigger rocket parts, which is also a good thing, really. I think because it means there's more room for everything I want to take with me. And I reckon if I take one of these service bays along, I can shove some stuff, some of the science stuff in here, and just keep it out of the way. Although. I've stopped bothering to bring that back with me, haven't I? Because I take scientists along. So let's detach that, and we're going to need pretty much the usual here. You see, shield, there we go. Uh, yes, I do want it there. Do you think, let's say 240 and see how that goes. Oh, already had one. There we go, I'd all that away in there. I might take um, some batteries along for the journey as well. Do you on the inside? Okay, that way I shouldn't run out of power at some sort of inopportune moment because I've been playing with the uh, balancey things too much. Now, ah, so the problem was my plan was to stick um, three fuel tanks on the outside of this as I did with the previous system and then use those to, to balance the thing um, when it lands and use them as basically as landing legs. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. The right size. I mean, obviously I can, it's just going to rather restrict access to the Sciency goodness inside. So consider those actually attached. It does. That's not really big enough. <laughs> Don't think it likes that because it's glowing red. Um, okay. Hopefully the Kerbals will be able to scramble over that sort of gap size. So we need engines, terriers, probably the poodles. I just, incidentally, I discovered what I was doing wrong with the um, Delta V for the different engines. So these ones actually got the, the um, these Delta Vs, I believe, are showing for the um, the ISP in vacuum. So these engines are actually far more powerful in uh, and far more efficient in in a vacuum than they are on the um, on the ground in, in in atmosphere. Sorry. So these Delta V numbers are about well, they're a lot less than they actually should be. And I'd have to go and look at look the numbers up to find out exactly by exactly how much. That would probably wanted to be about there. Oh, I haven't put landing legs on it. Oh, awesome. You can control Z actually works. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting that, but I thought I'd try it anyway, and it turns out it does. Landing struts, let's use the bigger ones, the Mark IIs. Looking good? Not looking good. <laughs> Come on, let me hook this back onto the outside. There we go. Okay, so that's my basic uh, lander. Now, one of the things I'd like to do in the future, but I don't think I've really got the space and what's name for at the moment, is, is actually hook a rover onto the bottom of one of these so that I can bring a, a car up with me and drive around a bit and look at things. But what I'd like to do is have some sort of grappler on the bottom here and then put it in a fairing and then, and so on. But that's going to be a bit tricky at the moment, I think. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll skip that for now. We're also going to need some parachutes on this thing for coming back in again. We have the extra large parachute now and a set of the drogue chutes. I'm going to put some more of the radial chutes on as well because I just... Just in case, really, because I'm always a bit paranoid about parachutes. I don't. I'd rather have too many than too few. Now, it occurred to me after the last mission that I don't need to have another engine on the bottom. All I need is a load of extra fuel from you. This one. Yeah. So if I use that fuel tank, but use it to power these engines up here, like that, then I can just ditch this fuel tank when it's empty. But I don't need the extra weight to bring a load of another engine, uh, another engine along on the bottom. Power it. Now the other possibility is using the the nuclear rocket here, um, but I think I'll save that for when I want to go a lot further because at the moment hauling the amount of fuel I've got into orbit doesn't seem to be too much of a challenge. So I'm not too worried about it really. Got up to the big ones now. I forgot about that. There we go. Have one of those, and then I need something to lift it off Kerbin in the first place. I'm tempted to use these massive twin bore engines. Are oh, they smaller? Okay. They all seem to be a size down from the. Um, yeah, these are all sized for the previous thing. Let's get... Maybe I've not unlocked the um, the engines to go with this size of fuel tank yet. <laughs> it's slightly embarrassing. Oh well, never mind. It's only got 1,500 meters per second. 
<laughs> I haven't unlocked bigger nose cones for these things, they're just going to have to go up like that. <laughs> That's just slightly unfortunate, but never mind. Alright, alright, let's have six of these. So how high that'll get me. Yeah, that fits quite nicely. <laughs> it's expensive though. God, it's still only 2665 in one stage as well. I wonder. Am I just getting carried away with this? And probably this as well. In fact, I strongly suspect I am getting carried away with this fuel tank. It's still not really enough. Maybe I built my upper stage too generously. And this is a pretty silly fuel tank. Let's get rid of that. And replace it with a... and that. Drop back down to one of these. Oh, I haven't put the um, fuel line back in the top. It's helped quite a bit, but I'm still not convinced that's enough. And these are going to be a lot higher because of the um, better ISP in vacuum. Hmm. I'm going to give this a test launch. I'm not entirely convinced this is going to work. But I want to give it a try anyway and find out how, how much it's out by. Um, yeah, I suppose I can take one. Okay, I don't need an engineer. Let's take the other pilot so she levels up. Okay, let's give this a try. See what happens. It tells me it might. It's too heavy. Okay. I'm not surprised. It's a very big rocket. Um, that's not what I meant. bouncy there in the middle. So that's a worry. Um, also I forgot to check the staging. These all go in here so it's... Oh no they don't. Take it back. I did have the staging right. These all go at the bottom because they're all supposed to light off at the same time. Then I chuck the outer boosters once they're empty. Then I chuck those. And then we start using those ones. Okay, let's see how this goes. Wish me luck. Right, let's try that again with the throttle at full because otherwise that's just a waste of fuel from the solid boosters. I'm amazed that six of those massive kickbacks, I think they're called, couldn't lift me. Right, throttle is at full. Try again. Oh, this is not a happy rocket. That's interesting. The inner engines ran out first. I was not expecting that. I was also not expecting it to be this dumbly. Oh, I didn't put that on, that's why. <laughs> Idiot. Right, um, how are we doing? Okay, that's a good kick up into orbit, certainly. Let's have a look at circularising. Right, 322. Okay, that's circular enough. It's using 1100, so maybe only about a quarter of the fuel. That's not too bad. That's in four minutes or so. <laughs> Those didn't go very far away, not surprisingly. I'm just surrounded by cast off rocket parts. Kind of, part of me kind of wants to make a, um, a reusable booster, because those were expensive. Let's have a look at doing that, actually. Save some money. Especially as I did quite a bad launch, because I forgot to put the... Um, I forgot to have the Kerbal control actually controlling the rocket on the way up. So in order to do that, I think I can just chuck a small service bay on top of one of these. And inside there, we can have one of them. Uh, in fact, that's, and let's put some batteries in there as well, just in case. Like that. Close that up. What? What happened then? Uh, I'll grab the thing off the side, I don't know. Actually, those ran out of fuel first. Let's give them a bit more. These are, these are the big... I know there's one. Uh, I want these one. Like a medium one. So on top of the fuel tanks. For goodness sake. <sighs> no, really, really. Just sit on top of them. What is wrong with this? Is that even... For <sighs> goodness sake. I think that's worked, because I'm pretty sure that number's gone up. <sighs> right. Um... They make quite nice nose cones as well, so that'll help with the um, aerodynamics, perhaps. Ah, oh, yes, I need to remove those as well if I'm going to try and cover the whole thing in one go. Okay, that might just work. Sneak a battery into one of these as well. Okay, so the plan is, fly it up, get the um, the top, the main system out of trouble and into a circular orbit. Hopefully I can do that quickly enough that I can then catch this once it comes back in and um, try and land it. See what happens. This isn't going to be quite as graceful as a SpaceX landing. It's probably going to, it's going to come in under parachutes, and it's probably going to come in far too fast and crash into the ocean. <clears throat> but we'll see. Okay, here we go. I'll put the rockets in the wrong place. Okay, so outer boosters, big central booster. Those will go together. Then that attaches, shoots, wings land, and onto this stage. Okay, let's try this again with less fail. I 
still have got a few left in the um, liquid engines in the middle for getting back again. Okay, so now we detach and try and use these a little bit. There we go. At least to pull that out of there. Good. How are we doing? Yeah, it's quite a nice healthy apoapsis. So stick a manoeuvre in here and see how it goes. So just, just need to circularise first. That's the important part. At least 55. That's obviously close enough. Right. So the plan is, we get up to here. I'll circularise the orbit for the um, for the for the lander craft that's going to go off to the moon. Then I'll try and bring the other part back into land, and we'll see how that goes. How far behind is it? Dropping back quite quickly, actually. Another question is, can I still open this? Yes. Even though there's some slight clipping problems there, but never mind. There's presumably no interesting science here because I've been here before. Yeah, that's not really either. Okay, so we've got a one and a half minute burn, and, got and uh, don't need to do it for three minutes. I need that to come down to about 45. Se no, yeah, 45 seconds, and then I'll start burning. <laughs> Let's get hot pretty quickly. Doesn't seem to um, be upsetting the, the fuel tank too much, at least. And yep, they're running off that one, and those are staying full. Good, that's working as expected. This is a very long burn. <laughs> At least it feels like it. And the amount of fuel it's getting through is... Mm, I don't know. I suppose this is only supposed to last until I get more or less to the moon. I don't know if it's going to do that at this rate, though. Although it is, this is the most expensive part of the um, trip, the insertion into a circular orbit. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Right, yeah, that'll do. Close enough. Use that one. Okay, now we switch to controlling this one. And this is on its... Um, still on a par parabolic or, uh, trajectory. So it's going to come back in and impact the ground about here somewhere. It's dark as usual. Let's probably see there because it usually seems to be. I honestly can't tell. It's too dark. Um, yeah, and at the moment there's not a great deal I can do with it. It's just going to drift along. Um, I want to point it. I said I want to point it backwards. It's not moving at all. Uh, okay. Apparently those um, AI cores don't have any reaction wheels in them, so I'm just stuck going where it, where it wants to at the moment. I'll be able to use the um, boosters to point point it backwards a little bit when I start to fire them. Maybe I should do a tiny bit of that. Am I on the way down again now? Yes, I am. It's pointing in roughly the right direction, as in down. Let's go a bit, let's have time go a bit faster and I'll do it when I get a bit closer to the atmosphere. In fact, it's swinging over naturally anyway. Okay, here we go. I'm into the atmosphere. Question is, am I going to be able to slow down enough or is it just going to cook? Re-entry burn. Burned. Next stage is to open all the chutes. But we'll see whether it slows down enough for that to actually work. It's not going that fast, actually, given how high up it is. My main concern is whether it has problems with this level of heating. But then it's the rocket motors at the bottom, and they're they designed to take quite a lot of heat because, of course, well, they're rocket motors. So hopefully... Yeah, speed's way down now. It's falling very quickly. I think we're getting close to terminal velocity. <laughs> 2,000 meters seems like a good time to open the chutes. <laughs> That's a lot of parachutes. And they're overlapping in a rather unrealistic way, but let, let's just ignore that for now. They're um, they're slowing the craft down, and that's what matters. And a nice gentle touchdown. <laughs> so all of the... Oh, oh I see. The solid solid fuel boosters destro got destroyed on landing, so those are just the parachutes from them. <laughs> right, okay. Let's recover this and see how much money I've saved from doing that. So I think the whole thing cost three or four hundred thousand, and from keeping that part of it, I've saved from <laughs> hundred thousand. That's I don't know. It's not too bad, I suppose. That's not worth. Yeah, kind of, kind of worth it. Okay, not too upset about that. But now, now we can switch back to the main event. I can find it in amongst all. There we go. There it is. Oh, that's an area where I'm supposed to be reconnoitring, I guess. Moonlander. Okay, so the plan from here is to make our way out to the moon and land there and see how we get, see how we get on. Push that out. Oop, too far. <laughs> That's an actual path that will take me directly onto a collision with the moon. That's uh, handy. I could do that, I suppose. And that's about the minimum amount of fuel I can spend to get there. So let's try and line these up. Yeah, that's an actual direct encounter in, into the moon, as in crashing into it. And that's about the least fuel I can do it with, I think. So 734 delta, uh, meters per second, and I've got 1,200 in here, so I can use quite a lot of that for braking when I get to the moon, because at the moment I'm coming in for a direct direct landing on it without without bothering to orbit first. So, But I don't see any problem with that. It's still glowing. That's impressive. I suppose it's not been all that long. The uh, It came into land pretty quickly, and there's nowhere for the, no, not really anywhere for the heat to go. 
I should probably get pointed in the right direction. Nearly the right direction. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see the um, boosters gimbling as they try and correct even though they're not firing. Neat. There we go. Oh, too bit late. Never mind. <laughs> sure it'll be fine. I'll probably still hit them in. 4.9 meters per second out. That's pretty good. Not quite good enough to hit. That's a periapsis of 268,000. Okay, that's pretty high still. Let's have another um, correction burn about here. I don't know which way to adjust though. That would do it. A little bit more speed. There we go. <laughs> don't need this anymore. About this point, I'm going to need to start burning backwards. I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get down to the, down to land as gently as possible. Here it comes. Now my speed isn't actually all that high, so that's probably relatively safe. Let's check out the science while we're hovering along here. Floating along, rather. 4.6, I've apparently done that one already. Uh, can I see? Yes, I can see that. Nothing interesting from those. Right, that means Bob has to pop out again and do his Kerberly duty. I should be able to do it without... Oh, those are all a bit in the way. Without quite so much um, free floating this time. Let's collect the data from there, restore it. Can you reach that one? No, he can't. <laughs> Okay. All right, take it back. I should put ladders all the way around this thing. Right. Still a very, very long way up. Let's speed up time a bit. We are speeding up as we fall towards the moon. I think 500 meters per second is a good amount to burn off at this point. Actually, is it? Let's let's use this to find out how how much thrust I seem to have because I want to have a good feel for how quickly I can burn speed off because I don't want to be getting too low and then realise I, I can't get rid of it quickly enough. Pretty quickly. Okay, we'll leave that at about 300 for now. That seems pretty safe. <clears throat> We're still in the same place, aren't we? Yeah, high over the moon. How much fuel's in here? Still some. Okay, well, we'll do what we did on um, Minmus and chuck that at the, basically at the last minute because it's useful for now we can speed time up again. We're landing on the light side, which is nice. I don't think we're aiming for the centre of one of the massive craters, which is a little bit of a shame, despite the advice we were given in whichever tool tip it was. But, oh, can't know everything. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, if we don't if we don't worry about the amount of time taken to get down, because obviously I can speed it up and Kerbals apparently don't get bored, does it make any difference to how much fuel I use exactly when I burn it? Like, if I, do, if I keep slowing down like this to 300 and then letting it speed up a bit, is that does that use more fuel than a suicide burn? I don't know. I don't know what the because th obviously obviously hovering uses a lot more fuel. But if you're able to just if you use exactly the right amounts, you stop in the right place, but you come in generally more slowly. I don't know. How's that tank doing? Are you empty yet? Yes, you are. Goodbye. Ten thousand meters. Oh, let's put the legs out. This thing's actually quite big. I hadn't realised until I started flying it in like this. Right, that was a deliberate, slightly longer burn than normal because I noticed I was heading over quite close to the to the, lip of the wall of that crater. And I don't want to come down right in the middle of the crater. <laughs> uh, sorry, right on the wall of the crater because that's going to be very steep and very difficult to land on. I'm now, yeah, low enough that I can't warp time anymore. <clears throat> yeah, this looks like a reasonably good place to land. Uh, let's have <laughs> ground level. A little bit too much. Bouncy, bouncy, and touchdown! Made it! Hurrah! Right, let's run all the science things while the uh, Kerbals settle themselves. <laughs> yes. Moon Midlands, eh? What was that? The fuel tank I dropped went ages ago. Well, <laughs> it's one small step for a Kerbal. And yeah, that's a pretty giant leap. <laughs> Splat. Okay, so we take a surface sample, that's quite good. I guess we put up a flag. Something like that, perhaps. I feel I should pose for a photo, but <laughs> I can't get everything in in one go. There we go, that'll do. I suppose I could mirror that one for the, um, <laughs> the screenshot, but everything else would look a bit weird. Right, um, I haven't got breaking ground expansion installed. God, the graceful creatures, aren't they? I haven't got breaking ground installed, which means none of these rocks are remotely worth looking at. Um, I could I could go for a walk, but I don't think I want to. It's going to take forever to get anywhere interesting. I need to bring a rover along. That can be a, a future plan. I could try and bunny hop with the, um, with the lander. That worked reasonably well last time. 
Let's have a look at the fuel, see how we feel about that. Because I reckon I'm going to need about 900... Pre presumably, apparently about 1700 meters per second to get back. Although, some of that is downhill, for want of a better word. Um, I can just drop into um, Kerbin's gravity well and bleed it all off as heat, so I don't need all of that. Oh, I didn't reset all of the Kerbinses. <laughs> His arms aren't long enough. I wonder if you can do it from under... Oh, bump. Underneath. What do you reckon, Bob? Can you get at that? No. <laughs> okay, we'll try from the other side. There's a much easier opening there. There we go. Well done, Bob. Can you walk around to the other side inside there? No. What can you reach? Yes. <laughs> Kerbals and their long arms, apparently. This is actually quite a big rocket. That's uh, quite a big lander. That's probably why I had so much trouble with the getting enough delta V on the um, and on the first stage to get it to lift it up because it's massive, much much bigger than the previous ones. Oh well. Okay, so I've got 1600 delta V. That's actually not much, leaving much spare. I think we might have to um, just go home, having made it to the moon once, uh, one, to one point on the moon. Can I just blast straight off and go head straight back towards Kerbin? I think I probably can. Just launch straight up and see what happened, uh, and just go for it. Let's do that. Although I do want to run all the science again on the way up, like this. Ah! <laughs> right, how's that? Why is that putting me? <laughs> Escape velocity, okay, great. I um, <clears throat> might have overcooked that a little bit. If I've doomed us all, I shall be quite sorry. Oh dear. That's not good. I have overcooked it a bit. Okay, if I do that, <laughs> then that only uses 200, that uses half of it, brings the apo into there. Okay, that's manageable. That'll get us back. Oh, yeah, I used far too much power taking off there. It was um, a bit of a screw up. <clears throat> I got distracted by all the juicy science I was doing. What can I say? We won't try and go inside this time. I don't really need. I don't think there's any need. There might be at this rate. You can't get close enough from there. Ah. Two. What? Goodbye, moon. Okay, now we have the burn that will circularize the orbit a bit and stop us leaving Kerbin completely. <clears throat> right. Now we warp the apoapsis, and then we burn retrograde again. Basically, until that drops onto Kerbin, into get into um, the atmosphere. It won't be too long. There we go. <laughs> then we walk back down this way. Sixteen day. Jeez. Yeah, that um, added an extra month onto the mission. That screw up on takeoff. <laughs> on takeoff from the moon. That's horrific. Like, oh well. Now we just need to fall back into what Kerbin, which I can't even find. I wonder if we're far enough out. There's more useful science to do up here. Or even am I? Oh, I'm halfway back now. Never mind then. I think it probably just been high above Kerbin, as far as this game is concerned. And... Oh yeah, three, okay. I yeah, miscounted my zeros. <laughs> uh, about to hit the atmosphere. There we go. Burn off the last of the fuel. Ditch the other bit. Come on, ditch it. There we go. Ah, that's terrifying. <laughs> Ooh, a land landing for once. That's going to make a change. I didn't use very much of the airplane the blazer. I just used like 10%, no, less than 20%. I've seriously overdone it with the parachutes on this one. Not that I think it's going to make any difference, because I don't think you can... I don't think parachutes work at slower than 5 metres per second, so that's the furthest down they can actually take you. <laughs> but still... But still, I think um, having 9 of them on one capsule is probably rather overkill. Okay, sounds like some of the um, second stage made it down to the ground. Some of the, some of the lander and reorbiter, I don't know what you want to, what, what to call that. And... nearly, nearly, almost. Touchdown! Right, where am I? Deserts, you say. Okay. 2.4 science, joy. <laughs> it's hardly worth it. Right, recover the vessel. 660, that's that's pretty respectable. I mean, it's, it's not quite what I got from going to Minmus, but then Minmus, it was the first time I'd been in Minmus, Minmus's sphere of its that sphere of influence, and I landed in two different locations. So, you know, I got probably got about, well, a lot more for that. Um, yeah, probably about, it was in fact about twice as much, wasn't it? So that makes sense. But still, that's, um, yeah, not to be sneezed at. Uh, parts are only worth 6,000. 
at least partly because they oh no they're quite close and the crew um valentine is only dinged up to level one but yeah that's a good start good i'd say that was quite a successful mission i feel that's been quite a good episode um i don't know what that is let's pick it up anyway there's no crew just some debris okay well, i've collected it i don't know what it was what have i done so we've flyby of the sun oh maybe that was the other thing i launched in the previous episode that just went out into deep space and went on for forever and we forgot about it um land on the moon 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 and moon flag good excellent so like i say that i think that was a pretty good episode it might have taken me um about twice as long as i really wanted it to to get there and back because i um screwed up to take off from the moon and nearly went out into deep space but other than that it was quite a good um quite a good mission so i think yeah I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that the next thing to do is oh if someone else wants me to plant a flag on the moon um and go to minmus again that's fine i want to, i'd like maybe i'll take a rover it's tourist big engines sure and this is the oh, this was the um rendezvous capabilities as well wasn't it so i need to do that as well okay i think next Next episode, I'll have a go at um, doing this rendezvous mission. That sounds like um, it could be quite interesting. I'll probably take some tourists with me as well. Uh, now that I've got a bigger craft that I can put, just pack more Kerbals in. If I take if I take a three-man pod up, then I can take. No, I'd need to take a. Um, I'm going to take a hitchhiker can as well because it's uh, going to be a bit too big for a single three-man pod. Uh, but then I can pick up um, the the loss. Oh no, hang on. No, I don't need to do that. I just launch one up for that. Is there a? Is everyone needing rescuing? No, all the all the rescue missions seem to have disappeared. That's a shame. But I reckon yes, I can take I can take the tourists up. That's not a problem. I won't do the moon anything on the moon yet. Escape trajectory not going to do. <laughs> Definitely not going to Eve. That's crazy. Not going to Minmus just yet. Not going back to the moon this time. I'll be taking one of those parachutes up with me though. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll do. I should be able to pick up at least three of those, and maybe I'll take one of these atomic rockets with me and just boost it off into space like I did with the um, the last one, just to just to watch it go. But that's all for next time. So, and that'll and this is all for this time. So, I think that's yeah. As I say, that's been a pretty good episode. I've been to the moon, planted a flag, brought back some stuff. So I'll until the next episode when I'm as as we say, I'm going to go up and try for that rendezvous, which I think means I need to make two rockets and send one up after the other. But yeah, I can do that. Uh, Thank you for watching. See you next time.